Lord, we are here again today, Jesus, to learn at your feet. Open our hearts to receive your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. For us, you came that we might be saved. Of what use will it be, Father, if we gain this whole world? And loses our soul. That I ask this morning. That you touch every heart. That needs you Jesus. Help us Holy Spirit. For in Jesus name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today we're looking at the indwelling power of the Holy Ghost. I actually feel like not ministry today. <laughs> As I said, when it comes to flesh, <laughs> we just want to be cozy. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I wish I had the Bible not to preach. <laughs> but yeah, the Lord arrested me all through the night. One night of that I'm supposed to be home sleeping, I always figured I'm always like grabbed by Holy Spirit. And um the Lord revealed some things to me tonight for the church. And uh, I, I would say, the Bible says, let him that will let, will let. If you allow him to move, he will move. But he's ready to pour out the Spirit upon those that are ready to receive it. I actually saw some that received it. And um, I'm not going to mention names. And I, I said, oh, you have exercise self-control that you not mention it's even to these people. Just to watch and see the move of God. So I would want you to open your mind and heart. I often tell people a lot. I said, you would not understand what it means to have the power of Holy Spirit in you until you are faced with life tough challenges. Until the devil raises his head against you then you would know what it means to be a child of God most times we we have life too easy some have life easy some don't have life easy but for those that have life I mean that do not have life easy when life begins to shine at them at beauty I mean in beautiful places they begin to enjoy the goodness of God they forget their God and those that have always had life easy, when they have the opportunity to experience the power of God, they still wonder, what is it that I need God for? There is a God in heaven. And he has raised us as sons and daughters of the kingdom to manifest this power, the indwelling power of the Holy Ghost. Acts 1.8, Romans 8, 9-11. Luke 4, 18 to 19. Let's open our Bible, please. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. Romans 8, 9 to 11. Book of Acts 1, it says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and, the, and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Let's somebody read Romans 8, 9 to 11, please. Please let's read the Bible passages quickly. Luke 4, 18 to 19. Romans 8, 9 to 11. Yes, sir. For ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Mm -hmm. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, if you do not have the spirit of Christ. He is none of his. You are none of Jesus. And if Christ be in you, and if Christ now be in you, the body is dead the because body of sin. Is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life. But your spirit is alive because of righteousness. Because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, Amen. Continue, he that sir. raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies mm -hmm. by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, brethren, mm -hmm. we are debtors not to the flesh, mm -hmm. to live after the flesh. Mm -hmm. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. 
But if ye live through the Spirit, the, do mortify the deeds of the body. Yeah, I think it's to 11. Thank you, sir. Amen. Luke 4, 18 to 19, please. If you're there, please read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has appointed me to bring good news to all. Amen. Continue to read, sir. Blind will see. Oppressed will be set free. The time of the Lord's favor has come. We all know the story in the book of Acts of Apostle. When Jesus departed, he told the disciple, wait until the Spirit comes upon you. And he says, you will receive power. Now, the presence of the Holy Spirit in us make us to be fully children of God. He said, if so, the Spirit of God dwells in you, it will quicken your mortal bodies. That is what that Romans 8 read. It would quicken, it would bring you alive. The quickening, the work of the Holy Spirit in your life is to make you become a new creation that do no longer live after the flesh because if you live after the flesh you become depth to the flesh that's what that scripture explained now the power of god upon us said he give us power over everything i put down i said not some superpowers because children of this days they go like oh we have some superpowers and uh, they want to see superpowers it's not talking about some superpowers, but you are engulfed in the power of Holy Ghost. You are no longer ordinary. And it's not this power of God that works in man that makes you start acting like you are one uh, genius somewhere. Or that you start want to appear like one special being. And this is why many believers have soiled their garment because... They want to show that they are Christians. So they went after the devil to receive strange powers that men miss. They just want, I call it, they're trying to uh, be acknowledged by men. There's a word, a common word, being validated. They want to be validated. They want men to recognize them. And no, the power of God in us, what it does is that it crippled the man of sin. It put to death the ability to be able to continue to sin, to live in ungodly ways. And ye shall receive power. I put, I said, the first assignment of this power is power to witness. Power to witness. It is a generic thing. There's nothing like, oh, sister, doctors have the gift to go and be evangelizing. No. When the power of God rests upon you, the spirit of God is upon brother Mario, he would run to go and preach the gospel. When he sees someone who is committing sin, who, is, who has still long dead in their sinful life, he has the passion, the fire is burning inside of him. Because we try to alter the Bible to suit some I will use the word carcass of the, uh, Christians. And many people just believe I have the Holy Ghost if I can speak in tongue. And then we measure so much on things that are very irrelevant. When you speak in tongues, you speak to edify yourself. You're communicating with God. It's got no benef benefit to other people. The Spirit of God upon a man, the indwelling power of Holy Ghost that is set to come upon you would push you to preach the gospel. You will not be comfortable. Like, you can't be comfortable to be among sinners. And you will not go on your knees and cry for them. You pray for them. You follow up with them. You want to make sure they are on the right path with Jesus. You stand against sin. I was telling a brother this morning, I said, many people preach against sin, but they don't stand against it. There's a difference between you preaching it and standing against it. You're saying no to it. It doesn't matter who will listen. But you stood against it. You'd make them understand there is a way that cement right before a man. But the end thereof 
there are ways of death. The presence of Holy Spirit enables us to be effective witnesses of the cross. It becomes a fire in you and you cannot but speak. You cannot but speak. Look for a thing that our brother read. He said, the Holy Spirit upon a man is an auction to function mightily in witnessing. You are not coming to witness because you want to perform a miracle. You are not going out to witness because you want to promise that brother. Once you give your life to Jesus, you would uh, be healed of your diseases. No. But there is a promise for those that go out to witness. It's an auction. And as God wills, as it, it, it's, it's left to God to do that wonders through you. At the time that he wills, it's not a thing that you command because you feel like people should know that you have the power of Holy Ghost. The power of Holy Spirit within you will not even allow you to have such mindsets. Second assignment of the Holy Spirit, it's indwelling teaching, indwell teaching. So let's read John 14, 26, 1 Corinthians 2, 12 to 13. John 14, 26, 1 Corinthians 2, 12 to 13, and then 1 John 2, 27. Thank you, Ma. You can go ahead, Ma. But, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said. God bless you, Ma. He said, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. He will do what? The Father sent. What's he, going to, what's he coming to do? Indwell teaching. Indwell teaching. It's the purpose. So, you are a Christian. You've been baptized by the Holy Ghost. You are called out, sanctified. And then you are in the midst of people, perverse people. And you are still asking questions. Ah, Abby, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Ah, maybe, maybe. No, that's not how it works. How it works is that the spirit of God in you, it's reproved sharply. It speaks loudly and you can hear him. It can, you can hear him loudly. It's not a joke. All these things, I don't believe them before. But it comes to a time that even me, I started doubting my own self. Like when God revealed things to me, I'm like, mm, that's not going to happen. Until they happen. And I'm like, whoa. Because God is teaching me. It's like me seeing Sister Cynthia with her beautiful. I'm like, oh, that sister is so beautiful. Uh, and this is Tani Femi that always like hide me with her fine face. I'm like, she's so, she's so harmless. She looks so harmless. She can't do nothing bad to me. And then God comes and reveals that. This person is going to do this thing to you at a time like this. And you're like, she's too nice to do that. She can't do that. She's a beautiful lady. She... Holy Spirit is there to teach me so I can be careful as children of God. He's there to like, order your steps. It's not like he's going to turn your back against your sister. Now let's understand this. Because we taught unity of the body of Christ last week. When you receive revelations like that, about your fellow believer, the Spirit of God teaching you, guiding you, all you have to do is go on your knees and start praying for that person. When life dealt with me, very one of my sisters said, God is savage. You will say it, and I will just say, pa, pa, pa. Then you start saying it after, and I smell. I said, well, I've learned a lot. Now it doesn't matter what I see. Once I see, I ask God what is next to do. And at a time that you are interceding for them, you're praying for them. If the person is approachable, if there are people you can't talk to, talk to them. Brother, sister, let's be careful. Let's not allow the devil in our midst. Let's not allow the devil to come to us. This is what I saw. And you all can pray together. Do you understand? It teaches us. The Holy Spirit upon you and inside of you, living in you, becomes a teacher. That you will not you will need no man to teach you. I really want us to understand this. It doesn't mean when Brother Emmanuel is teaching now, I won't listen. 
or I'm not taking, that's not what we're talking about. The Holy Spirit in you, in the life that we live, we are in the midst of darkness. So Holy Spirit's presence in you is illuminating your environment. It's keeping you afloat. You are on top of every situation. Do we understand? Before it happens, you've seen it. That's where the superpower is now. <laughs> Let me go back to the, the, the uh, teenager's language. Man, we go like, how come you know? Because Holy Spirit is teaching me. Holy Spirit is there to minister, to guide me, to direct me. You cannot embrace sin and expect Holy Spirit to teach you. Let's know. Bible says, do not provoke the Holy Spirit inside of you. You cannot constantly walk through the paths of sin and, and believe that the Spirit of God. Now, we need to understand the difference between gifts and the power of God resting upon our life. It's just you carrying your vessel in a very sanctified way, minding your business in the Spirit and just looking at things as they evolve around you. You see sin coming one way, you run 1,000 miles away from it. The fear of God. Say so the eyes of God are too holy to behold iniquity. You cannot continue to soil your garments and expect the presence of God to be there to teach you. It's a lie. It's the spirit of lie that is working in you. That is the truth. But when you look at yourself, you ask the Lord, Father, all that you've asked me, I'm doing, Lord, help me. Help me. I always say every child of God that feels they've passed that stage of total surrenderness to all constantly ask God for help, they are not born again Christians. You cannot be, there's no, there's no amount of life. Even Jesus cried, prayed to the Father to help him. Elijah found himself at a point where he had no more strength. He cried and prayed. So there are life situations that we overwhelm you that you can only do but pray, ask for help. Then the Spirit of God will speak. You are not carrying yourself like you're better than anyone or you are older than anyone. But you say, great I am, Lord. Help me. I am feeble. And Holy Spirit will always be there to help you. For our youths that are about to get married, I made a video on that. It's on my YouTube channel. I have a personal YouTube channel. It is an error in the body of Christ. And it is evil, eating deep into the body of Christ. That youth will continue to commit sin. I would state it's sexual sin without repentance. And we see them in the church. We cannot bring Jezebelian spirits into the body of Christ. And expect the power of God to manifest through us. It is a lie. It cannot happen. If you truly repent from that sin, now every sin a man commits is without the body, but the sin of fornication is against your own body. And we are the temple of a living God. The Spirit of God dwells in us now. You carry that Spirit of God now, polluting it with fornication. You're not coming to tell me you have the Spirit of God. No, it doesn't work that way. It the power of the Holy Ghost cannot subdue such body. You have to come to be washed. Now, I will re I'm, I'm referencing the youth because I want to make a point. How do I know? How do I know? How do I know? How do I know? The brother can do this. How do I know we are clinical compatible because of the little ones I'm just trying to like because we have adults here. They want to know. You want to know. You have so many things you want to know. And this is why we, many youths are turning their back against the Bible. Because of over curiosity. They have too much questions. The kingdom of God is a mystery. Unto us it is given to know that mystery. But you have to put yourself on the altar of sacrifice. To be able to launch into the depth of Christ. To receive that mystery. You cannot continue in your sin. 
and say grace should abound, God forbid. You want to test the brother before marriage. You want to test the sister before marriage. You want to pollute them, corrupt them before marriage. You are rebuilding a family that is corrupted. A home that is not on Christ Jesus. It is not the ways of the Lord. Every good and perfect gift is from the Lord. In whom there is no variableness or shadows of things to come. If the Lord has said, that is your wife. The Holy Spirit is there to teach you both all. Hello? All. Oh, you don't believe it? We don't believe? No, let's be real. We don't believe? Holy Spirit is there to teach us all things. Okay, let's do a practical example. That just dropped up on my mind. Ah, Sister Dorcas. Ah, look at my face. Ah, in the book of Genesis, when God created Adam, I was explaining to someone, I said, a woman is created for a man. A man is not created for a woman. That is the Bible. In the creation of the world, God created man. God had fellowship with man. And yet, God sees that something was missing, even though God was, was present with him. And when God created Eve, it is not good for him to be alone. Let's create and help me, right? And when God created Eve, wait, is it written in the Bible that God went to teach him how to? Oh Lord, Lekabaya. Holy Spirit teaching us all things. Because it's a natural force. It's a natural force. It happens naturally. You grow into each other, you evolve into knowing each other. It is erroneous to think that you have to test it. It is evil. And stolen water is always sweet. The moment you test it, you continue to test it and you never be satisfied. Even The brother can now choose to just walk away. When we had a, a hangout with Jesus this year for the youth in Bear Creek Park, I told them, I said, if you touch this one, you said, and now, I've seen in the church, they said the brother has aborted five babies for the sister and then he dumped her. Pick another one in the church. Hell is raised upon that brother. And you that continue to yield your member to sin, you have to repent. The Holy Spirit is there to teach you all things. When men sees you, you appear to have answers to all their questions. You appear to have answers to all their questions. That is the power of God. Constantly ministry solution of men's problem into your hearts. And that is when we shine as lights. Jesus told his disciples, he said, do not premeditate on what to come and say. Because at the time that you need to speak, I'm speaking. Do you understand? So Holy Spirit in you, teaching you what you need to know. It helps you to remember all things that need to be remembered. This part is very important for children, youths who have issues studying the Bible. It's okay. You might feel like, oh, I read the Bible this morning and I can't remember it. That's fine. There is an appointed time for that scripture to be used. You are not studying it to come and show Aunt Dockers that, hey, Auntie, I can read Genesis 1 to 50 without looking at the Bible. Oh, Auntie, oh, yeah, I have A1. I've had a lot of Christians say, I know the Bible. I can read it back to back, blah, blah, blah. That's not the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Empty we are. When it is time for the word to be used at the appointed time, Holy Spirit inside of you, we bring it to remembrance. And you'll be wondering, oh yeah, I, I, I didn't even know I can remember that scripture. It's been a long time I read it. It's like a storeroom. As you're reading, you're studying. It's like it's been stored up. When it is time to war with it, you draw your sword. And it, 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 it touches the right spots that needs to be touched at the right time. Because Holy Spirit himself will use it through you. Amen. Colossians 4.24, I mean 4.2-4. Can somebody quickly read that please? That is the prayer of Apostle Paul. 
Colossians 4 to 2, 4. I like to read a lot of scriptures because it's in the word of God. We can bring... Yes, ma. Yes, ma. Continue in prayer. Continue in prayer. Watch with the same intensity. Door, God will open unto us a door. Hold on, Mama. There is a door of utterance that must be opened to every child of God. We need to understand that. There is a door of utterance. Apostle Paul said, I have not come with excellency of words, of superfluity. I'm not here to boast how much English I can speak, but I have come with the power of Holy Spirit, the word of life. With simple terms, they just want to speak it easy. Simple words. Because it is not what they are coming to teach, but the power of God speaking door of utterance. When the door of utterance is open to a man, I've seen people hold the mic and they are stammering. They can't even put their words together. I used to interpret for someone is back home. And sometimes I will be bored. I'm like, ah, this pastor is not, <laughs> I, can't, I can't connect. It's not, it's not, she's not speaking. And some will be ministering. It's not like they have uh, all the notes in this world. No. But you could feel, you could connect with the power of God speaking through them. And it's like you prepare the notes together. As they are saying it, it's like the spirit in them is connecting with yours. And the word is coming. Door of utterance. And this is what I tell all the workers in the church. You want to come and do anything on the pulpit? Say, Lord, open doors of utterance unto me. That I may speak your mysteries to your children. Not my word, but your word. Amen. First John 2 27. For the anointing which have of him abides in you. Abides in you. The anointing that you... Please, let's take note of those scripture rest preferences. The anointing that you have received. Now that you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost come upon you. Now I say, the anointing that you and I have received, it now abides, it's indwelling. It abides in you. Yes, ma'am. And ye need not that any man... You need no man to teach you. So this is not heresy. This is not what... It is what the Bible says. You need no man to teach you. Yes, mama. But as... as Anointing as the same things. anointing teaches you all things the same anointing yes ma'am and it's truth and it's truth and it's no lie there's no lie and even as he has taught as he has taught you you will abide in him the anointing in you will teach you all things all that you in your marriage as kingdom children you have taught all things. When I talk to youths and they come to me, I listen. And they bring the matter on the table. I would ask them, what do you think as a child of God? As a child, because the truth is that we know. We're just looking for who we validate the satanic lifestyle we want to live. We're looking for who we second it so that we can go and launch and sin. I said, well, Sister Shalatu said, no, I won't join, no. I always run away from many things. The Bible says, do not be partakers of other men's sin. Go and sin alone. Don't hurt me to eat. I will tell you the truth. So I will ask, what does the Bible say? And the Bible says, that, obey the word of God. You are a child of God. It can be very difficult to say. Nothing is difficult for me to say as long as it's the word of God. You have decided to know nothing among men except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And that's all we have to give ourselves. It's like a brother now, a sister come tell me, oh, my husband is doing this to me. And your husband belongs to this body of Christ. <laughs> the brother needs to, oh, yeah, let's see. Uncle, what's going on? What does your Bible tell you? Oh, yeah, open this Bible. Read it, sir. How do you feel? You don't need to tell. You don't need to say anything. You don't need to say too much words. Give them the word. It's a discern. The Bible says that the word of God is sharper. Than what? Than two-edged sword. Now, I tell people, when you're hearing the word of God, and you're rejoicing, Ooh, wah, la, la, wah, wah. no, it's not working. Sword pierces. And when it pierces, you bleed. 
And when you bleed, do you feel pain? Do you smell you bleeding? Except you're psychopaths. But you don't smell through bleeding. You cry. You ask for help. You go for medical aids. So when the word of God is coming, it's true, it's pulling you apart. And it's doing the work of molding and breaking. You submit to him. You might be properly molded. It teaches you all things. That is the work of the indwelling power of the Holy Ghost. And we should remember that all scriptures are given through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And that scripture, the Bible says, it is written in our hearts. It is written in our hearts. So we automatically become the epistle that the whole world is reading. I think that takes me back to 2 Corinthians 3. Yes, please let's read it quickly. 2 Corinthians 3, 2 to 3. It becomes the world, the book. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. You are our epistle. Yes, ma. Written in our hearts. Known and read. Known and read by all men. Do we understand that scripture? Can somebody read NLT? New Living Translation, please. Mama, did you read 2 to 3? Yes, ma'am. For as much as here are manifested, also epistle of Christ. Epistle of Christ, yeah. Ministered by us. Mm -hmm. Written not with ink, mm -hmm. but with the spirit of the living God. Mm -hmm. Not in tables of stone, mm -hmm. but in fleshy tables. In fleshly tables mm -hmm. of the hearts. The word of God. Please, NLT, please. If you're there, please read. I'll read. The only letter of recommendation we need is you yourself. You yourself. Now, please, let's pay attention. The only letter of recommendation I need, Brother Mario, to show me being a Christian is who? Him himself. Himself. As you are. Yes, Papa. Your, loves, your lives are a letter written in our hearts. Your life, they are a letter that is written. In our hearts yes everyone Papa. can read it and recognize your good work among you everybody can read it so what is men reading about you that carries the holy ghost what are they reading can we have a sober reflection like what are they reading if i will ask sister olami then what is men reading about your life you are a representative of Jesus. You have the Holy Spirit in you. What are they reading? We are the book that they read. Are you done, sir? Clearly, you are a letter from Christ showing the result of our ministry among you. What a glorious place and position to be. Said clearly, you are a letter from Christ. This letter is written not with pen and ink. But with the spirit of the living God. It is written with the spirit of the living God. It is carved not on tablets of sto stone. But upon the table of our hearts. But on human hearts. Amen. Does that feel good? It feels good to me. To know that when men sees me. They are reading my life to read Jesus. Do we understand? First Corinthians 2 says that. We have the spirit of God in us. And we, we know the thoughts of God because his spirit said no man that knoweth the thought of man except the spirit of God that is in a man. And we have the spirit of God in us. So which means if God is saying, hmm, I am hearing, hmm, <laughs> so exciting, I don't know how to explain this. You understand the move of God. You understand what God has in store for you. Every movement of God you understand. Like I said, it's not when you find yourself in that, in that place, you are not, you'll be too crippled to even remember that you are a walking epistle. You won't even remember to want to shoot like all this pride of life that we want to show because you forget all that because you are in a new world. You are in a new kingdom and things are done differently from what we see here on earth. Amen.
So we become, because of the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God did not enable us to become God. Jesus said, ye are gods. Before I go to the results, I, I made a note again. After further study, the third assignment of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 to 17. Let's read that quickly. 1 Corinthians 3. Where Emmanuel, please take my can read for me. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 to 17. Yes. First Corinthians 3, 3 16, to 17. 16 to 17. Do you not discern and understand? That KJV. You don't have KJV. Okay, you are released. KJV, please. <laughs> Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God and that the Spirit of God I think I've read this even quoted that of person. Yes, mama, go ahead, ma. Yes, ma. If any man defile the temple if any man defile this temple him shall God destroy him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy for the temple of God is what? It's holy. Mm -hmm. Which temple do you have? Which temple that you have? It's not a question. It's an affirmation. So the temple of God now is holy. The same temple that you have. So the power of Holy Spirit help us to become holy. It gives us the ability to become holy. The indwelling power of the Holy Ghost in the life of a believer gives him the complete ability to be a holy temple. Holiness is what defines the great personality of the Lord that we have within us. Holiness defines God. That is the definition of God, of Christ. Holiness. There is a hymn I remember very plain in my head. It said, called on to holiness, church of our God. Purchased by Jesus, redeemed by his love. Watch from the lost and the Lord. Help me, you're reading <laughs> Holiness unto the Lord is a watchword and song. Holiness unto the Lord as we're marching along. Sing it, shout it loud and long. Holiness unto the Lord now and forever. Holiness defines God. Holiness helps you to think and behave like God. Say, be ye holy as your heavenly father. Is what? Is holy. Holiness aligns you completely with God. It aligns you completely. And you will have no reason to struggle with the affairs of this world. Because they will have no hold on you. It says, holiness aligns you completely with God. So I've mentioned three assignments of the Holy Spirit. Let's do a quick recap. The first one is what? Ma? The first one? The first assignment of the Holy Spirit as stated today in today's message. Ma? That's the second assignment. How mm. Power to witness power to witness and then indwelling teaching and then power to be holy amen let's 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 have it in mind and let's we'll be doing a review next week by the way so we should all come prepared <laughs> yeah because we want us to remember as we're teaching now the results mark 16 17 to 18 please the results what happened when you have the holy spirit indwelling in you Mark 16, 17 to 18. Who is reading? Time, our time is ticking. Yes, ma, you can use the mic in front of you, ma. 
These signs shall follow. Who believe? Who believes? They will cast out demons in my name. They will cast out demons in my name. And they will speak in new language. They will speak in new tongues. Eighteen, ma. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink anything poisonous. And if they drink any deadly things, it won't hurt them. It shall not hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick. They will lay hands on the sick. And and they shall recover. A true child of God does not design their lives around signs and wonders. I put that as a first disclaimer. You don't design your life around signs and wonders. But it is a sign. This thing follows you by default. These are the results. You are more focused on becoming like who? Jesus. In all holy conversation. That is your focus. Amen. Signs and wonders, they are like our birthright. Do we understand? It's like your right, your kingdom right. So these signs shall follow them. Who on my name believe? It's a promise that must come to pass. It has been spoken. These are the results. Anywhere you go to, to minister, whatever you go to do, you don't have to worry. Even if these things are not happening, rejoice because the lack of not happening is also an answer to prayer. Do you understand? It's a miracle itself. Because God understands you can only align with him. He said on the ministerial feed, even your shadow will heal the sick. Most miracles that Jesus did are not done for those who would receive it and not come back to him. When we look at the way he does his things, he's, we call it um, the final authority. He healed uh, seven and I think only one came back and he said, where are the other? And the last, the person, one person that came, he put the seal upon him. Amen. At the point of giving your life to him, believing, signs also follows. Remember, I would never tell anyone to give their life to Jesus that they may be healed. That's not the preaching of the cross. Yeah. So you can be at the beautiful gate and still be blind. It doesn't mean Jesus is not Lord. There is a time appointed for all things. And today I want somebody to cry out. Paul Zacchaeus cried out. He cried, Son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy. So at times you might need to cry, give your voice to Jesus. Ask. Do we understand the pattern at which the message is going? You might need to cry out to him. But for all the children of God, the promise is sure. You just go and walk. So at this time, I want you to reflect. If you've not yet received the power of Holy Ghost, we'll pray today. That you receive that power powerfully manifesting in your life and through you resting on you today in the name of Jesus. So I want us to stand up and pray. Let the power of the Lord come down. Let the power of the Lord come down. Let the power of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the power of the Lord come down. Let the Spirit, let the Spirit of the Lord over every life yeah jesus we pray let the spirit of the and ye shall receive power when the holy ghost come upon you
the righteous path, the holy path. Beholding the promise. We want to experience you again in our lives and in our church. Let your power be evidence in every lives here, O oh Lord, and spot in the name of Jesus. As you have revealed, Father, perfect now in the name of Jesus. Pour out your spirit upon them. Take away every stony heart, Father. Begin your work upon every heart, the table of their hearts, in the name of Jesus. I know, Lord, because you said you will have mercy on whom you will have mercy on. So I pray that we be partakers of your mercy this day in the name of Jesus. At the time that we cry to you for help, when the flesh is dominating our vessel, and we cry out to you to help, Lord, again unto our cries in the name of Jesus Christ. Give us the ability and the capacity to subdue the flesh in the name of Jesus. Because it is not us, but your spirit that work in us, oh Lord. Help us have a father. For in Jesus' name I have prayed.